the wandering albatross has the largest wingspan of any living bird. Using its almost four meter long wings, it has been known to circumnavigate the globe in just 46 days. They can travel thousands of kilometers without a single flap of the wings. In 1797, Samuel Taylor Coleridge wrote the famous poem, The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, in which an albatross meets its end. Ironically, once the mariner kills the seabird, things go downhill for him from there. Perhaps Coleridge had a 200-year foresight into the fate of this bird, now one of the most threatened on Earth. Beyond a shadow of doubt, albatrosses almost around the globe facing extinction largely because of seabird bycatch. Seabird bycatch is when birds come into contact with the vessel, either the, either the vessel itself or the fishing gear. In, in long liners, they typically will get caught up with the hooks and dragged under as the line sinks and drown. In trawl fishing, bycatch is when the seabirds get entangled in the fishing gear, get dragged under and drown or, or get wings broken or fouled and end up drowning. Long line fishing is a commercial technique that uses a long main line baited with hooks at intervals to catch fish such as tuna and saltfish. Trawl fishing, on the other hand, involves pulling a net through the water with one or more boats to target hake, sole and prawns in South Africa. Something needed to be done to stem the massacre of albatross at sea if their untimely demise was to be halted. In the 1990s, the impact of longline and trawl fishing on large seabirds resulted in the development of the Global Seabird Program. The major focus of the GSP was and is to save the albatross from extinction by working with the fishing industry as well as governments to find solutions to seabird bycatch. This became the specific focus of the Albatross Task Force, or the ATF. The Albatross Task Force is a group of instructors who have been trained up by BirdLife International to try and address the prevalent and pervasive issue of seabird bycatch around the world. Uh, they started in 2006 in South Africa. It was the first team to be created and they're active in South America and Southern Africa to set up a precedent for how the rest of the world might be able to address seabird bycatch. In 2011, the first sea trials were undertaken on an incredible invention, the hook pod, a device intended to prevent high bird bycatch in longline fishing. This was just the first step in one of the most remarkable conservation success stories. This is your typical normal pelagic longline branch line. So what usually happens during normal fishing is that you have your, your bait, you have your hook, the fisherman will hook the bait onto the hook and then he will throw the hook into the water like that. The problem is that during setting, there is a certain period before the line sinks into the water. The birds pass over and then they see the, the bait, they don't really see the hook. They go for the hook and they get hooked because the hook is naked. With lines with the hook pot on, what happens is that the fishermen will do as normal, put the bait on, and instead of just throwing the line in, he would actually take the barb of the hook and then put it in the housing of the hook pot so that the barb is protected from being eaten by a bird and catching a bird. And the hook pot will protect the barb for the first 20 meters while the hook is sinking. Uh, the hook pot is, has a pressure release mechanism that when it goes underneath water it can open up so that it can release the hook. It also has a battery housing, housing batteries for an uh, LED light so that it can attract fish towards the baited hooks. The hook pod is a great example of people looking at a problem and taking a different approach to fixing it. We've come close to a final product now and we're hoping that in the next few months it'll be ready to go. The South African Albatross Task Force have also successfully lobbied to have Tory or bird scaring lines declared mandatory for South African hake trawl fisheries. 
Bird scaring lines were originally invented by a Japanese fishing master on a tuna longliner because he realized that he was losing a lot of bait to seabirds, um, baited hooks that should have been catching incredibly valuable tuna were instead catching seabirds and he realized, well, this is really inefficient. We joined ATF instructor Chrissy Madden on one of her regular bird scaring line inspections on a fishing trawler docked in Cape Town. Basically what the storyline does is we hang it at the back of the boat and it, it lies on the outside of the warp cable which is going which is holding the net underwater. And that's the danger zone, that's where the birds can actually get killed. Under us here is the there's a warp on either side which holds the net. So here will be the line and that's where the Tory line is. So the warp and the Tory line. And so this is protected from the seabirds that are coming, that are attracted to the vessel. One can clearly see how effective the Tory lines are. The yellow streamers keep the birds clear of the warp line, the area responsible for killing thousands of birds annually. As effective as they are, a small number of birds, like this cormorant, still get through. Luckily, this bird survived the impact. We had to trial different materials, uh, different colors, different attachments, positions, a whole range of things which can affect the performance of the bird scaring line. And, and over years we did this, we worked hand in glove with the industry to, to check out what works, what doesn't, try and make it as cost effective as possible. And we ended up with a product that is very affordable and extremely effective. The protection of the iconic albatross has not only benefited birds. A small community on the Cape Peninsula reeled under the impact of a stressed fishing industry that saw many fishermen become unemployed. That is, until BirdLife South Africa and the ATF stepped in. Partnership has been going for about, I think, nine years now. And it's, it's helped immensely. It's put us on the map, I'd say. It's um, made people aware that persons with disability are able to produce something that will assist the environment. So the main components of a bird scaring line is first of all this long rope. And this is about minimum 30 meters long. Then what the guys are doing here is they, they're actually building streamers and it's made out of hose pipe. And it's bright yellow because the sea is often blue and the contrast between the colors is really good so the birds can see it. The center has been making the Tory lines for a few years now, but it is not often that the community members get to actually see an albatross, albeit a stuffed specimen. In this box is a Tristan albatross, which was unfortunately hooked and killed on a long line, but the guys here haven't seen an albatross before. The bird that Chrissy uses is a relatively small species, but its wingspan is still impressive. The wingspan can span up to 3.5 meters, so I would make a terrible albatross. <laughs> Good morning. So this is a Tristan albatross. It's uh, one of our South African birds. We've been working with the fishing industry to try and prevent these birds from being killed in the fishing process. And that's where you guys also come in, building these lines to scare the birds away from the vessels. So we don't have to see these only stuffed. We can see them alive in the ocean still. You guys are doing a fantastic job. It's really great to be able to help conserve albatrosses and other endangered seabirds, but it's fantastic that we're also helping a local community that's it's quite impoverished and they wouldn't have this opportunity if we wouldn't have this project going. In 2008, it was estimated that 18,000 seabirds were dying annually as a result of the South African trawling industry. Thanks to the efforts by the Albatross Task Force, by 2014, that number had been reduced by 90%. More astounding is the impact on the Albatross specifically. The reduction in Albatross bycatch has been quite dramatic, 99% if things are done properly, which is a pretty remarkable success. Last year, Ross and his team were awarded the prestigious Nick Steel Award for their work with Albatross. 
Look, it's really gratifying to receive the recognition and to know that the work we're doing is considered you know, out of the top draw globally and locally. Um, we're pretty proud of the success that we've achieved. It's, a, it's been a long, hard slog. And to cross the line like that and get that sort of recognition, well, that's great. Couldn't ask, couldn't ask for anything more.